But at some point, the actual perpetrator, uh, after the statute of limitations had run on the office, the actual perpetrator, a man named Jerry Wayne Johnson, began writing, for whatever reason, uh, conscious of whatever, writing the district attorney, the judge, uh, anyone who would listen to him saying, I am guilty of an offense that an absolutely innocent man was convicted of. This was in the 90s. No one would listen. Nobody who he wrote responded or even followed, as far as I know, even followed up on his claims that he actually perpetrated the crime that Tim Cole was convicted of. kidnapped me at knife point, knife my throat, and drove me out to, I didn't know where at the time, but it ended up being the outskirts of Lubbock, and he raped me for three hours. Um, I was terrified, scared, I, I, I was scared I would never see my family again, I didn't, you know, I, that was my main thing. I was a virgin at the time, that was another thing that scared me, because I didn't want to lose my virginity, I would believe in waiting for people marry and have sex, and um, I wanted to to wait and when he was doing that all, then I started thinking, well, I just better get out of here alive. That I, so my survival instincts kicked in and I wanted to just get out of out alive. And I did, I made it out alive. I, I somehow or another got out of there. He let me go after he raped me. And um, anyway, I, I immediately called my parents, I called the police and, um, and uh, they got the investigation going. Within a week or two, I guess, they, had, um, they said they had a suspect. So, um, and I trusted the police. I had no reason not to trust the police. I was 20 years old. I didn't know any better. I, didn't, I thought they would, you know, they'd be what they were doing. I, I just. But it was about a week till we can have long. And um, he was convicted. He got 25 years. And I thought it was in my past. I thought it was, you know, I took this horrible experience in my past and that it was always. I guess it was May of 2008 when I got a call from George White at the Texas, uh, Lubbock, Texas uh, DA's office. And anyway, he told me he told me that um, that we have some news that uh, that Tim Cole died in prison. And I said, he said in 1999. And this was 2008. And my first thought was, well, you know, when you're just calling me nine years later. What's you know, why would you just be calling me now? And he said, uh, well. We didn't want to bother you back then or you know upset you or whatever and i said well you want to upset me now what, what's why are you calling me now and he said because we have new evidence that there that he was not the real rapist the real rapist is actually jerry wayne johnson he came forward and he submitted to a dna test and that he's the real rapist i was just shocked i can't even begin to tell you how shocked i was i mean my husband was at home that day and i was just floored that this happened and um, he, he was, but George White said, you know, he was the guy who was the, the other suspect back then. Well, I had no idea there was another suspect. I even called my mom, who was very involved in all this was going on, and my dad and everything. And they said, well, we don't ever say anything about another suspect. And then, then, because I thought maybe it was just my father and him, but my parents didn't have anything to do about another suspect. So, Jerry Wayne Johnson was But to know Tim, you would have to have met him. But I'll do my best to try to convey to you what type of person he was. He was offered probation the day before trial. And he told all my parents, I'm not going to plead guilty to anything that I did not do. If they want to give me 25 years, I'd rather serve all 25 years than to admit to something I did not do character and conviction, which is the same as in all of these gentlemen who are talked about being exonerated. He was subsequently convicted and sentenced to those 25 years for aggravated rape. On the day he was sentenced, down in the cell, he was crying, saying, why did they convict me of this crime? 
There was a gentleman in the cell next to him who heard him cry. That man was Jerry Wayne Johnson. The love of police had already arrested him for two other crimes that happened the same way. But they chose not to pursue that. They labeled Tim the tech rapist, and there was no backtrack, no going back. But I'll tell you, while he was in prison, if you could only imagine my sister in law school and her brothers on the news for a week straight as the tech rapist. She wrote to Tim while he was in prison, saying that the pressure was too much. She wanted to give up and transfer her back to SMU where she did her undergrad. But he wrote back in a letter telling her, do not leave Tex lost it. I still believe in the justice system, even though it does not believe in First things first, though, I want you all to kind of all breathe with me for a minute, a little, uh, a little reflective deep breath at what's getting ready to happen in a very few hours. And that is the first historical commemoration, formal acknowledgement by this state that it has wrongfully convicted somebody that it killed that wrongfully convicted person and its prison system, and that it was wrong to do so. That's what's going to happen at Mount Olivet Cemetery. That is an amazing step forward, a gigantic milestone in the history of the state. And it's worthy of reflection, but it's also worthy of thinking about in terms of understanding how we got and not just where we were in the beginning, when Corey and I met each other and I came to know this family in this case, but also where we were 10 years ago, 15 years ago, in the system that Mike Ware and I came into, that Charlie Bear, who you'll soon hear from, came into. A system that refused ever to acknowledge that there even was such a thing as a wrongfully convicted person in this state. A system that absolutely denied that it was so flawed that it could produce this. Now the significance of this case, and the significance of all of us being here, and that marker being put up out there today, at that lonely site, is that it is a public recognition and an acknowledgement by the people that did the wrong, namely our state government, of the wrong that they have done. This is huge. Ladies and gentlemen, this marker, my brother Tim Cole shall forever remain in the consciousness of the Texas criminal justice system, a constant reminder that in these United States, the innocent do sometimes die in prison, and in that case, the system does not work. It has failed Tim Cole, and it has failed so many others. By no means do we think he is the first to die in prison, but he is the first to be recognized. It is said in the book of Matthew, namesake, the book of Timothy, it is written, I fought the fight, I finished the race, and above all, I kept the faith. That is my brother Timothy. 
I'm going to peel back this plastic and I'm going to read to you what the state will ever have in the annals of Texas history. 